Prior to the British colonization of East Africa, the native Giriyama tribe had migrated from Somaliland to the area north of Mombasa in the 1600s. The tribe on arriving to this area was around 60,000 members and made their living selling ivory and slaves to the Arab traders along the coast. The tribe was also famed for its production of poison arrows. To commemorate this migration, a shrine called the Ke Fungo was built, surviving the various eras of colonial rule from Oman, Portugal, Arabia, and now British, the tribe was known for evading taxes and labor demands. With the arrival of the British, these trade routes evaporated and were even illegal for the natives to be engaged in. This was made awkward by the British allowing Arab merchants in the area to still unofficially maintain a slave workforce and deal in ivory, while the British didn't allow the local tribes to do likewise, and in fact, constantly taxed and required labor quotas of the local native tribes. Despite this, Germans and Girma tribes were able to trade ivory unofficially. When war erupted in East Africa, and with the German capture of Taveta, the Germans aimed to raise a native revolt inside of British-held territory. This came at the same time that Girma's shrine south of Kilifi, the Keufungo, was destroyed on the 4th of August by Public Works team to get the Giriyama to stop evading British authority. Both inciting events are presented by different authors. In reality, the situation arose from a mixture of both. Conditions finally boiled over when it was found a native British East African policeman was found having relations with a Giriyama woman by the tribe. He was cut down by poison arrows on the 16th of August. On the 18th of August, a pair of native policemen of Gior's district administrator were murdered in the Manga Hills by a force of 150 men of mixed tribes, Giriyama and Digo. The next day, these tribesmen assaulted the Gior district commissioner's camp. Then, the rebellion tribes made another assault on the assistant district commissioner at the Gior mission on the 22nd of August. These assaults were likely an attempt to capture the weapons and supplies stored at both areas. Both these assaults were repulsed, but the situation caused the assistant district commissioner to make a call for military assistance. Again, we see the British being well-disciplined and moving quick to respond. Between the 23rd of August and the 27th of August, F Company of the 4th King's African Rifles and the number 1 Reserve Company of the 3rd King's African Rifles marched into the Mang Hills under the command of Major J.M.P. Hawthorne, who had assumed command of the area. On the 28th of August, the revolt attacked Hawthorne's King's African Rifles Force. Around 1,000 tribesmen encountered the F Company of the 4th King's African Rifles, and after a short exchange of fire, the rebel tribesmen scattered into the brush. The encounter left 30 dead tribesmen and two wounded King's African Riflemen. They remained on station, but further combat exchanges didn't occur. By contrast, the E Company of the 1st King's African Rifles landed in the north of the Giarma territory, finding the tribe happy to greet them and not needing to engage in any military operations. While labeled as a Giarma revolt, it was in fact headed by a pair of Digo women elders. Mikatali, Menza, and Wanja Mwadori were captured and charged with inciting treason and additional witchcraft charges. Found guilty, they were exiled, sources cite being sent from the coast to either the northern border with Somalia or the western portion of the colony. The remaining Giyama tribe was made to pay a cash and livestock fine from both loyal and unloyal heads of the Giyama tribe. The exact scale and precise figures are missing from the sources, atop that a force of 1,000 porters to the army were to be provided. But again, sources show that these porters over time simply stopped showing up, and the British weren't punitive in response to their disappearance. The British called the loss of Taveta to the Germans and the Giama revolt as a reason for nervousness. Governor Belfield knew that British Indian army troops were on the way, but continued to fear further native revolts. Despite the fear-mongering, while dealing with both threats, the local commanders were able to shift resources that were needed when and where and contain both episodes.